AI-powered research platform SciSpace recently released an advanced level account, which gives you access to their new feature, Deep Review. Deep Review is their answer to ChatGPT's deep research. If you've tried deep research on ChatGPT or possibly on Gemini, you might have been a little bit underwhelmed when it came to academic research. Whilst it does a much better job than regular ChatGPT with finding sources, still doesn't quite hit the mark with academic referencing. SciSpace is trying to change that. They've built their own version called Deep Review. Today we're going to have a look at their article where they compared the two. I'll show you a couple of examples of using Deep Review, and I'll compare and contrast it to the ChatGPT and Gemini versions of Deep Research. I've got links and discount codes for SciSpace in the video description. Starting on this page, we have some comparisons that SciSpace made when testing their product against OpenAI. They gave 20 complex research queries for each product, and from top 5, top 10, and top 20 results, they recorded how many were directly relevant to what was asked. We can see that in each case, not every single paper that was found was directly relevant, but in each case, SciSpace had outperformed deep research. This mirrors my experience using both as well. The customization that SciSpace is doing makes it slightly better than OpenAI for academic research in particular. There's also a big difference in terms of the average time taken for searches. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of searches. We're going to start with one that I've already done, and I'll talk you through the output. And then we'll do one live, and so you can see how the prompting and the searching happens in real time. So once we've run a SciSpace deep review, we get an output that looks fairly similar to their standard and their high quality, but there's a few differences. One of the big ones is how deep they've searched. We can see here that they found 402 relevant papers after going through 1750. So that 1750 isn't all the papers that exist. Those are the ones that the research steps will have identified. We can pop this out as well to see the research steps. And we can see where I've started with my prompt and it's come back to me asking for specifics. With this particular example, I didn't do a great job with specifics. I only added higher education. If we wanted to get an even better and an even more specific set of results, the more detail we put into our initial prompt and into the subsequent prompts that it asks us, the better it's going to do. So we can see here that it's asked us for a few specifics. We've got two sets of enhancing the query and then refining the query. And then it jumps into these steps. And this is fairly similar to what you'll see on the ChatGPT deep research and other products that are coming out with a deep research version is that you'll get a couple of iterations of refining your prompt. It will then start to execute multiple queries that are different variations of what you asked. What's really nice here is that it does show us what it's found at each stage. So we can see that it's got relevant papers here. And if we want to hit show more, we can pop this out and see more and more of them. And so we've got the relevant papers based on the filters, and then it's done some more refinement. So we've got three different sets of possible papers for us to be able to skim through. Once it's established those, then to write the summary, it does some more deep thinking. Again, we can pop this out, view the details, and we can see that there's a little bit of discussion there. It's really nice with these programs now that they will start to be a little bit more transparent in terms of the thinking and what's going on. Coming down further, we then get a table of contents for our summary report that we have asked for. And so we've got the headings, we can jump to any of those, or we can scroll down, we can see that everything has been referenced. Hovering over any of these references, we can see what they are. Clicking on any of these references will take us down to the table at the end. The table provides detailed insights and results, and is something where we can even control what columns get added to this table. From this table, we can click on an article. It will bring a new tab up where we get the article itself. If we have the PDF of the article, it will be there in a viewer for us to read. And on the right hand side, we have this chat. So we are able to chat with the paper. We can ask for specifics. We can ask it to explain certain things about the paper in order to help us understand it better. 
Another pretty cool thing when we have one with the full paper is we've got this box here, explain maths and tables. Let's say we grab these graphs here. In our chat window here on the right, we can see that it's taken a screenshot and then it's got a description, particularly detailed description of what's happening in these graphs. With this chat, every time we ask it for something, it offers suggestions of follow-up questions as well. So in addition to things we might want to ask, it suggests things that we might want to explore further. Coming back to our summary report, we can scroll down, we can see that it's been very well referenced, set up with nice clear headings, bullet points, and a really good coverage of the content, including future directions, recommendations, and a conclusion. From here, if we like that, we can click Save to Notebook, and it will save a copy of this into SciSpace's set of notebooks for you that you can then edit write with or export. Below the report, we've got all of the papers. So it currently is just giving the first 20 of the 402. We can get go down to the bottom and get it to expand that. We can get it to only show ones with PDF or open access. We've got a variety of other filters, including year and publication type. And if we scroll to the right, we can see that in addition to the columns it gave us, there is a number of different suggested columns. And then you can even add your own custom columns as well. So by going create new column, I can get the program to go through each of the papers and look for what I am interested in. We can see here one of the columns added by me, which is quite useful, is changes over time. So it will go through all of the papers that I have selected and anywhere there is any kind of time series data or changes over time it will make sure that in that box on my table it will tell me about those. So now let's take a look at a fresh deep review and I'm going to search we can see here that it gives suggested searches it also gives you recent searches. I'm going to give a pretty detailed one. So I'm interested in a literature review at the relationship between plastic pollution in the ocean and climate change and I've been really specific here on some of the things that I'm looking for. So we'll hit go and we'll see that this is going to take a few minutes. First thing that will happen is it will come back with a prompt here for me to give some more specific details. So I'm going to give some more specific details and then once I've hit enter I I will get it going again. So exactly what it asks in the extra steps here depends on how detailed you've been. So I was very detailed in my initial prompt and then it wanted some specifics. Do you want to cover any of these particular four things? And in this particular case, I've said all of the above. But if I was perhaps only interested in microplastics and marine ecosystems or one of the others, then I could put in the details of exactly what that I want it to be focusing on. We can see once I did that, it started thinking about what kind of searches to do. And we can see this list starting to grow. So it's looking at different kinds of queries all in that microplastics climate change area. Got a little counter here, so 40% just flicking over to 50% done. We can see that it's not immediate, but it's also not super slow. You're not going to have to wait for 5 or 10 minutes, maybe a couple of minutes, and it will normally be done. As it goes, we can see that it is finding papers, and we can see this is starting to build up into what we saw in that previous example. So we can see that it's done couple of searches there. Once it's done those couple of searches, it's grouped up the papers in a couple of different ways. And then it flicks over to starting to write our summary. And we can see that that's now done. We've got our table of our papers. We come down to the bottom here. If we want more than 20, we can hit load more papers and it will just keep loading chunks of them. It always gives us related questions, so if we want to continue with more steps, we can click on any of these to ask these, and it's normally pretty good with the related questions it asks. And coming back up, we can see that I now have this really nice report about links between ocean plastic pollution and climate change, together with a detailed set of references that I can dive deeper into. And when I dive deeper, I can do it as one by one individual, but I can also click on multiples and get it to focus on multiple papers at once as well. So finally, contrasting the Gemini Deep Research and Chat GPT Deep Research with SciSpace Deep Review, it's a little bit of a shifting landscape where each time I come in here, there's some changes to availability and exactly what they do. 
For me, the major difference was that SciSpace is built very focused on academic research. So if you are a researcher wanting to do academic research, it is much more built for that than either Gemini or ChatGPT options. The ability to access either ChatGPT or Gemini seems to periodically change. So Deep Research was up until very recently available for free. And if I was contrasting a free offering versus ChatGPT, which up until recently was only available on the $200 per month plan, then it was quite clear cut between those. And SciSpace was doing a better academic job, but it was still a paid product. But now Gemini has put the Deep Research into their paid offering. By contrast, ChatGPT, and I imagine this is going to be very temporary, has the option here even on the free plan. However, we can see that you get a handful per month, so it's not something you're going to be able to reliably use. It does mean that you have the opportunity to test it though, and I think that's quite handy just to see how deep research is working in ChatGPT, which is a more familiar format. And then you'll be able to take the prompts that you did there and perhaps contrast it to something like SciSpace and see that difference in the more academic approach. So this has been the SciSpace Deep Review. Thanks for watching. Next up, you might like to check out this video where I give a tour of some of the other AI tools available in SciSpace.